Hello and welcome. The goal of this podcast is to get listeners connected with others in the sports industry because they say it's all about who you know, and now you know us. Hello and welcome to the Constant Sports Podcast. Today we will be talking with Ashley Sloper. Ashley is the Associate Director at the University of San Francisco Sports Management Program. Thanks for joining us today, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. And then we also have Sal Caprida, our co-host here, joining us today as well. Absolutely. Let's get to business. Awesome. So a um, little bit of background on Ashley. She's worked in the kind of academic industry for a few years now, and she's been with the athletic tutor. She's been kind of athletic administrator, and then she's obviously now the uh, associate director at the University of San Francisco, specifically in their sports management program, as I alluded to earlier. So today we're going to kind of do a deep dive on the program itself, you know, how it's established and how they have kind of cultivated, you know, one of the leading sports management programs here in the world. So we're excited for today and we're just going to go dive right in. Sound good, Ashley? Sounds great. Awesome. So can you give the, uh, the listeners and viewers here a little bit of background on kind of how your career arc started, how you're kind of in the sports industry, academic side of the sports industry? Yeah, Absolutely. So I'm actually an alum of the University of San Francisco Sport Management Program. And long ago, I knew that I wanted to work in sports, but I didn't really know what that meant. And one of my first internships that I accepted was with the Academic Services Department at UCLA working with the football team. And instantly, I kind of knew that I loved being on a university campus. I loved working with student athletes and blending both education and athletics. And so I was very fortunate to work for a couple different schools in an academic mentor, academic advisor capacity. And so I worked working with Division I athletes, you know, through their academic progress, but also working through NCAA eligibility, um, both from an initial eligibility standpoint, standpoint for students entering D1 athletics, and then also meeting those continuous, uh, continuing eligibility benchmarks as they progress towards graduation. So that was wonderful, and I had an, an amazing time. And then a few years ago, the opportunity came up to return back to USF and work in my position now. So I like to say that I'm sports adjacent because I get to work and partner with a lot of professional teams with community departments with colleges and really transition to now working with graduate students who want to work in the sport industry. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. And just something that popped up from your, your answer there that uh, I wanted to get a little more background on was that decision to attend this program and kind of what, what led you there after your, your undergrad experience and then deciding to go to the program itself. Yeah, so it really was just kind of this recogn rec like realization or recognition that I wanted to work in sports. I, I'm a huge sports fan. I love being active. And so I wanted a job or a career that I enjoyed, right? I wanted to like going to work every day. And so when I started this program at USF years and years ago as a student, I was kind of an open book and I was just ready to explore different opportunities in the sport industry and higher education and collegiate athletics and merging athletics and education just ended up being my passion point. Lovely. And then as um, so most of our listeners are kind of in the, in that phrase, you know, between undergraduate to graduate stuff. So kind of as Sal was saying, what, I mean, did you look at a bunch of other programs kind of what went into that? Was it just, you know, this specific program and just kind of put your eggs in that basket or can you kind of walk us through that? Yeah, I looked at a lot of different programs, and I think that, that one of the things that spoke to me personally and one of the things that I advise in my time working with undergraduate students is to, there's a graduate program for everyone, you know, mm -hmm. there is, there's a, there's a, there's a place in a program that is going to fit what your needs are. For me personally, I knew that going into grad school, I was going to have to balance working to pay for education and graduate studies. So I looked for a program that would allow me to do both of those things. And what really resonated with me was the fact that when I looked at the alumni from the sport management program at the University of San Francisco, they were doing things that I thought were really cool and exciting. And so if I could find a program that put me in a position to kind of emulate the success of 
their alumni, that to me was really important. And that ended up being a really great fit. Hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's the, the, the alumni kind of as Sal and I were talking off ca- or, you know, off camera before the podcast yeah. is when you're kind of looking at programs, even jobs, essentially, you kind of look at their like roster, you know, who, who do they have? How do they stack up? And, you know, I think that that's a big, you know, aspect of these programs is kind of who's their alumni, where they work. So we'll, we'll get that into that a little bit later Absolutely. in the podcast, kind of where the alumni is at. But so do you have something to say? Yeah, no, just following up on that that as well is just I really liked how you put it that there's a program for everyone and being doing that research and finding, OK, what's going to be important for me to understand going into the secondary degree because it's not undergrad. There's other things to think about and just uh, doing the research and then finding a program that aligns what you're looking for is I think is important and definitely some why we created this podcast and we're trying to give everyone that opportunity to to find their program. Absolutely. And every graduate program is different. You know, Mm -hmm. even though you may be earning a degree with a similar title, the structure of the program, the requirements of the program, the commitments, they're all going to vary slightly. So really being, like you said, investigative and doing some homework and finding out which program meets your needs is super important. So um, speaking of the program, you know, in itself, can you give us a little history on the USF program, you know, kind of how long it's been around, that type of stuff, just some background? Yeah, so the sport management program at USF has been running since 1991 at our campus in San Francisco. And then our program here in Southern California has been running since 1999. So that is something that is really unique to us. We have two campus locations, Bay Area and Southern California that run identical programs simultaneously. And so what that does is it allows our students to have the flexibility to look for jobs and internships, not just regionally, but throughout the state of California. And because those identical programs are running at the same time, we have students who may start at the Southern California campus and then a job or internship presents itself up in you know, San Francisco and our students can transfer between those two campus locations. Our program is structured so that students are in class only one evening per week. That is either gonna be Tuesdays or Wednesdays. So we do that because working in the sport industry, your weekends and your evenings become very busy, right? So we created a model so that students could still be actively working in the sport industry while balancing academics. It does mean that our program is a little bit accelerated, right? Your classes, you may, your classes are generally six to eight weeks in length and you take one course at a time. So you are learning a lot of content in that eight week time frame. But again, you have the weekends and six out of seven evenings to be doing some other things that are helping you work towards your professional career aspirations. Perfect. And then regarding that, how long does it take? You know, you mentioned it's, it's either Tuesdays or Wednesdays and it's accelerated. How long does it take to complete the program? And kind of what does that look like? Yeah. So we're a 23 month program. We admit students in July and in January. So depending on when you're looking to start, 23 months soup to nuts is is what you've got. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And then can, can students apply to both the San Francisco and Orange County campus or is it kind of one done or? Absolutely. So you can apply to both campuses. We'll ask that you give or provide the preferred campus location that you have, but you can apply to both campuses at the same time. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And then uh, regarding kind of the a cohort, the class size, what does that look like? Is it how many you know students per class? How many do you accept? Um, yeah. So our cohorts are about 30 to 35 students. And so that would be 30 to 35 students in the Bay Area and then 30 to 35 students in Southern California. So each year we have about 100 new students joining our program, but that could mean that they're either starting in January or July and then depending on which campus location. You bring up the cohort model, which is something that is important for us. Because you're only taking one class at a time at USF, our students go through the duration of the 23-month program in a cohort. So they'll go through each course with the same group of individuals. And we really like the cohort model because it does provide an instant sense of community. And you're in an environment where you can go through different classes, really get to know the people that you are 
interning and working and studying with mm. and have pretty strong bonds during and after graduation. Absolutely. I definitely think that was one thing that uh, me and Connor, because we came came from the same program, I think that really resonated with us as well as yeah. the fact that you do create this bond with your classmates and you guys, you just that kind of like the a sports analogy, it's a team effort and kind of I felt that more and getting uh, the secondary education and, and that kind of stuff. So building that was super important and, and something that stood out to me. Yeah. yeah, you know those bonds are really important. Working in the sport industry is tough. There's a lot of rejection. <laughs> There's a lot of competition and a lot of rejection. So having that group of people who are going through similar experiences as you, who can celebrate the wins with you, but who can also mourn the losses in some ways, that mm -hmm. is really powerful, and it keeps the momentum going as you continue on with your classes. Agreed. And it, as you're saying, as the momentum, it's. It's more often not the students or, you know, the, your classmates are the ones that you're going to rise in your career with that are later on most likely, you know, more often not going to be the ones that are getting, helping you into jobs and connecting you with people. It's obviously the professors are going to play a role, yeah. but I, I, I think it's more of the people kind of your age, that, that group where you're going to all grow together. So that's, 100%. that's why I like the cohort model, kind of like you were saying like that. Yeah. And, you know, what we see oftentimes is some somebody in the cohort will get an internship and then maybe their boss is hiring for another person. You have that kind of insider connection that of somebody who's looking out for you. And, and that's really important for us. Oh, yeah, absolutely agree. And uh, just us kind of looking for our entry level jobs, internships, stuff like that. Connor can attest uh was able to find it but there was definitely a lot of a lot of no's and, and a lot of times where I needed some support <laughs> yeah no, that's that's what we're that's what the classmates and the cohorts there for so yeah can you give us so we mentioned about the class structure and how long it takes for the program but uh what are some classes maybe some I don't know if you have class you know favorite classes or stuff like that yeah, well, I'm sure if you speak to any USF alumni, they'll talk about the first class that they completed in the program, which is the Leadership and Critical Thinking course. Mm -hmm. And that course really sets the bar for what each individual is going to be pursuing in their own career path. You know, I think you guys know that there are so many avenues to working in the sport industry. Just because you get a degree in sport management doesn't mean that you're going to work for the insert NFL team here, right? There are so many different opportunities that the sport industry has. And so our first class, students are challenged to do informational interviews, to network, to really try to understand, one, what job opportunities there are, and then two, to explore and identify how you can get onto those career paths. And so that is always a fan favorite for us is our leadership and critical thinking course. Yeah, it sounds like a really cool course and um, maybe just diving a little bit deeper. So, if, you know, hypothetically, if someone was like, I want to be a, uh, I don't know, like a team president. So they kind of go down that rabbit hole of, you know, information interviews with the team presidents, you know, like minded positions. Is that kind of how that would work? Yeah. And I think, you know, as as we all know, there's not a linear path for every single right. job position, right? So sometimes it is just breaking down and looking at people in, you know, a position one day that you want to be in. My analogy is this, right? I'm an, I'm a Southern California person. So people often say, I want to be the GM of the Lakers. Well, there's one GM of the Lakers and I don't think that person's going to leave anytime soon, right? Yeah. So what are some of the skills? What are some of the environments that would give you the experience of working for an NBA team or with high level athletes? Mm -hmm. And how, what are the, pathways to achieving that right mm. uh, some that's popping up a question that i've been uh brewing on here is just what is kind of the impact that this program wants the students to go away with like what would be not necessarily the selling point but just the idea of you come you you attend this program you go through our courses you go you go through everything. What's the impact? What's the last, the everlasting thing you want students to come away with or hope they do? Yeah, that's a good question. I think there's a couple things that I, that come to my mind right away. And one is again, going back to that community feel, 
the strength of our University of San Francisco program is that we have a large alumni network, about 2,600 people, of course, in the state of California, but across the U.S. and internationally. And so how do our alumni who are out working in sport and making change and driving innovation, how are they giving back to our current students to give them opportunities to learn? And that's really important. It's that community engagement, helping people who are in positions where you once were, right? The other thing is that the University of San Francisco has a motto, change the world from here. So there is opportunity to make great change and impact in the sport world, but also in society and culture. And so are we training our students to be equitable, mindful of diversity, empowering people of marginalized populations, innovating in technology? What are the ways that our students are not only just going to get a job, but be able to create, create greater change in the future? And so I think those are two of the what is it, the driving messages yeah. you mentioned, Sal? You know, like what are the, yeah, those are two of the missions that we really want to push our students to achieve. Yeah, those are those are great missions and great, you know, pillars to have in a program. And, um, you know, I'm assuming the, the professors kind of, you know, help with that and obviously yourself and the other yeah. associate directors and whatnot, but kind of touched on the professors a little, and, a little bit. Can you give us a little bit of background on them and do they go back and forth from, you know, the San Francisco to the Orange County campus? Um, yeah, just- absolutely. And you nailed it right on the head there, Connor. Um, our We have five full-time faculty members and we have a pool of adjunct faculty members. Now, I think what's amazing about our full-time faculty is they do commute back and forth between San Francisco and Southern California. So the quality of education and the coursework really is identical between po- both programs. Um, And it's a huge commitment in time and resources and energy from them, but that's how committed we are to providing the same level of education at both campuses. And each of our faculty members, adjunct and full-time, are either currently actively working in the sport industry or have a very strong background in the sport industry. So, you know, in undergrad, you may have taken a sport marketing course that has been taught by, you know, somebody in the business or marketing department, and they're just teaching a course through the lens of sport, right? Mm -hmm. We flip the model. All of our faculty members have actively been in those positions. So they are qualified to teach sport economic and finance. But for example, our sport economic and finance economics and finance course is taught by Dr. Dan Rasher, who is the principal economist on the NCAA antitrust litigation case and who's actively involved with NIL, right? So- Dr. Rasher himself can provide firsthand knowledge about what it was like to get NIL to where it is today and what are the long-term implications for that. Hmm. I I think that's so critical to definitely, especially these sport programs and everything is having the professors with the firsthand experience because obviously it, it takes a special skill to be a teacher and communications big in that and everything, but I think that can be developed what can't be is that having that firsthand experience, living it out and being able to pass that on to the next generations is, is amazing. It's really important. And it's not only important for the content, but it's important for the application, right? Yeah. And it's important because our full-time faculty, because they're commuting back and forth between campuses, again, their networks and their contacts span the state of California. So you can call any of us on our faculty and staff and say, hey, do we know somebody who is working for the Sacramento Kings? And we can rattle off people. Or students can say, you know, are we, do we know anyone at UCLA? And we can say, yes, here are the people that we know. So that is super important. And it also makes the content that you're learning a little bit more exciting, right? Um, If you can, you know, not everybody loves accounting and budgeting, right? That's not everybody's cup of tea. But when you have the course being taught by the former CFO for the Clippers when Steve Ballmer bought the team, that brings an element of real world application that you probably won't be able to find at other organizations. Yeah, agreed 100%. And I might get in trouble for saying this, but I think, you know, grad schools, especially the sports management kind of sports business programs, it's not so much about 
the grades, you know, I would say it's more about the application and, you know, I, can I read this contract? And obviously, you know, if, I'm not a lawyer, yeah. but like, can I, can I get through the basis of this contract, figure it out? Can yeah. I do this, you know, marketing proposal? I think those application skills are really kind of what these programs are all about. And if, you know, those are the skills you need, not so much like, you know, I graduated with a 4.0 from, you know, my master's degree. That's just my personal opinion. No, but, you yeah. definitely won't get in trouble for that. I think for anybody who's listening, who is considering a graduate degree program, I will say that I personally think that graduate level coursework is in some ways easier than classes that you did at undergrad. And you guys can tell me if you think I'm right or wrong, but you're only taking classes that should be interesting to you. Right. Yeah. So even if it is a topic, you know, for me personally, I am not an economics person. But because I was being taught by somebody who was speaking in a language that I understood, which is in this case, sports, it was a lot easier to get through than taking a macroeconomics course Yep. years ago. No, yeah, I'm, I'm with you 100%. You know, the undergrad where you take it, you know, macroeconomics with, you know, 700 kids and there's just all sorts of numbers flying around. And you're like, I got no clue what that means. Then you kind of go into the grad school and you're talking about salary cap numbers and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah, this makes a whole bunch of sense. Like this number goes here. You got it. You know, so yeah, I'm dynamic. With you there. Pricing, it, it just is in right. a language and it, it's speaking in terms that you, even if maybe you don't want to do that personally, you can mm -hmm. now understand why those things are happening. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. So and I've talked about that extensively um, as we were in the ASU program ourselves, but yeah, we, we agree hundred percent there. And, uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, kind of go back a little bit with your extensive uh, alumni network. I believe you said it was around 2,600. So, what is that? You guys have, you know, annual events. How do how does the current how do the current students kind of connect with the alumni, and how have you seen that play out? Yeah, so we try to engage our alumni a lot. Uh, our alumni, I'm so fortunate to work for a program where our alumni really are vested in the, in what our current students are doing. So we definitely have social events that happens post COVID. We're going to have our first social event in March here in Southern California, you know, in a couple of years. So I'm really excited for that, yep. but our alumni are really involved in mentoring programs. So we have an alumni mentor program that we facilitate and we have, I think at one point we had about a hundred alumni who were participating, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's huge. Our alumni are actively working in positions to provide opportunities for our students, whether that be in internship positions, paid positions, or full-time roles. Uh, our alumni are also involved in, gosh, we have some information sessions coming up where you have an alumni speaking about their time in the program. There's just, we're really, really blessed to have a strong alumni network. Mm. I definitely that uh, it's so important, especially in the sports industry, when it's a the sports industry being such a network mm -hmm. industry kind of yeah. that deal. So having that strong alumni base is such an advantage for your program and being able to reach out to uh, your alumni is super straightforward and uh, easier to get connected with them versus just cold calling some different individual in the sports industry. Yeah. And what we find we, what we found is that many of our adjunct faculty members are in fact our alumni because who better to teach than the people who were also in those seats. So we have a lot of alumni who are working with the Warriors, with ESPN, who are now teaching our elective courses and kind of showing our students exactly what their day-to-day -day life is like, what's happening in their set industry, what are the trends, what can they be looking for. So that's a really fun full circle moment to see happen. Oh yeah, I'm sure, and that, that that'd be cool. I know maybe one day Sal and I will go back to a ASU and teach an elective course or something. Yeah. <laughs> we we um, and, yeah, maybe if they let us back in. Uh, you mentioned, you know, some of the alumni with the Kings and the Warriors. Uh, I guess could you give us a? You know, I'm sure they're all over the place, but just some of the places the the graduates have gone on to work with and teams they've worked for. Yeah. Okay. So. You know, if you look at the Golden State Warriors front office, there's a ton of USF sport management people littered throughout there. So, yeah. but we're really not limited to professional sports throughout the college sports sector in different marketing firms and agencies, in mixed martial arts fields, in yeah. nonprofit work and social organizations. We have alumni and students who are obviously in positions where they represent athletes themselves who work on the brand management and marketing side corporate partnerships, you know, you know, it's one of the things I love about USF sport management is 
the diversity and career paths that people pursue. You know, um, like I mentioned earlier, just because you get a degree in sport management doesn't mean that you have to work or that you will work at the Dodgers, right? Now you may, but there's a lot of different things that you can do with a sport management degree and our alumni who are working in fitness and technology in merchandise sales, in sustainability, in community, you just, there's so many different things and ways that you can apply a sport management degree. Yeah, and and, and you know, as you're just saying, there's so many, I feel like when, it, when someone thinks about like, oh, I want to work in sports, you know, it's either like team or, you know, some sort of like agency, but there's really, you know, just saying there's a marketing and then there's, there's the team, you know, there's the companies that work with sports teams, but they're not yes. like, you know, sports entities themselves or just like a, a business, you know, marketing company or, or yes. B2B, stuff like that, where, you know, sports is so, you know, entrenched in the business, you know, just economics of, you know, the world that you could right. work really anywhere and still be involved in kind of a yep. sports related role. So I think that's kind of something to keep in mind for the viewers and listeners. It's like, you know, if you don't get a job with, you know, the New York Knicks, the first two years, like you, you still got a shot, like just, just get, you know, re relevant work experience. And it all translates in my opinion to in both industries. Absolutely. And one of our alumni shared with us one time that he worked on this uh, corporate partnership side for a, a large banking institution. And he said, you know, when I was younger and I was on the corporate partnership side from the team, I always had to be the one selling the partners on sponsorship or agreements that were happening with the team. He said, now I'm being sold too. And I get to go to all these crazy events and I get to do all sorts of different things and people are selling me. So, you know, just there's, again, a lot of different opportunities to work in the sport industry. Yeah, no, yeah, agreed. And um, I guess talking about kind of the prospective students now, just a little bit, um, what are some things that you look for, you and your team look for in, you know, ex a, a, pers a prospective student? Is it, you know, relevant work experience? I guess I kind of already slammed on the GPA, but uh, the GPA, stuff like that. So we're looking for, you know, I always say there's no like secret sauce to the application. Mm -hmm. There's no secret code words that we're looking for. I think what we're looking for is somebody who demonstrates passion and commitment to learning because okay. there is an element of working in the sport industry where you have to be willing to get your hands dirty. You have to sometimes be willing to go get coffee for other people, right? You, you, a lot of, in a lot of organizations, you have to work from the bottom and work your way up. Yep. And so there, we don't have, we do have a recommended GPA of 2.75 cumulative. If you're shy of that, it doesn't automatically disqualify you from admission. But, and we're not only looking for people who have experience working in sport already. It's kind of a mixed bag. What we really are looking for is somebody who understands what they're committing to. You know, graduate mm -hmm. school is a commitment financially. It's a commitment of time and it's you're signing on for two more years of school, right? And so we want to make sure that our applicants and those who join our program are going to understand what that commitment looks like and they're ready to make that commitment. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, really appreciate you kind of giving that overview for students and you've done such a good job of giving the uh, vision of what the program is. Now, just kind of was wanting to know maybe what's more of a future look of the program and kind of that view that students can have. Yeah. So one of the things we're really excited about is this past year we transitioned. So we're now a master's of science degree. And I think why this is important and why this positions us for future sport involvement, sport career professional development opportunity is because, as you guys know, we're seeing so much of an emphasis in all sectors of the sport industry on the ability to use data to inform decision making and what are the ways that we can develop critical thinking and information how do we take all of this information that we now have about our customers about our fans about our teams and how do we make decisions based on that so i think the future of sport really is going to require future sport professionals to understand how to utilize CRM databases, how to interpret in troves of information that you're getting, and then how do we use that to continue to provide a quality product in the sport industry that is 
really changing, right? You don't just go to a game and you don't just show up and leave. And that's the end of the customer experience. There's so much more to that now. And in some ways we are testing and trying out what are different alternatives that we can integrate into the sport experience. So that is where I see the future of our students and what our curriculum is doing to support people who are getting ready to work in this type of environment. Um, and then just kind of to wrap up here, we uh, would like to give kind of give you the floor here. And if there's any, you know, upcoming events, if there's any workshops, um, yeah, like, like I said, the floor is kind of yours and yeah. you can just kind of, you know, give your spiel and, and, and whatnot. Yeah. So I would say that for the USF sport management program, just to kind of sum it up, we, we really pride ourselves on, on our three pillars, which are our legacy and that connects to our alumni network that I talked about earlier and just how long our program has been running and, and the quality of alumni and students that we produce. Second is uh, our leadership team and the fact that our faculty are actively working in the sport industry. Our faculty are also so dedicated to professional development of students while they're in the program. And so being in the classroom, learning from faculty members who are not only experts, but who are making an effort to know our students and to support our students outside of the class sessions that they're in is really important. And then our locations, right? Between Southern California and the Bay Area, you'd be hard pressed to find outside of New York, any bigger sport market, right? So yeah. being able to go to classes in the state of California and have the flexibility to you know, live in San Diego or work in San Diego and take classes in LA or to live in Sacramento and just drive into the city in San Francisco for a little bit is incredible. And I don't know of any other graduate program, not just sport management, but graduate program where you would have the flexibility to transfer campuses if a job or internship presents itself and to continue on with your graduate studies. You really never have to sacrifice going to school. You can prioritize getting your degree while actively looking for a job or looking for your next step in professional growth. So those are, I think, the three things that we are proud of that we think make us stand apart from everyone else. As far as joining our program, you know, we are right now accepting applications for summer. Again, we admit students in the summer semester and the spring semester. We don't do a traditional fall intake, which I know is funny, but at the same time, if you're only in class one night a week, we have to maximize the number of Tuesdays or Wednesdays in a 52 week calendar year, you know? Mm -hmm. So we are accepting applications for summer enrollment now. And if you go online to our website, we have bi-weekly events where you can join us and learn more about the program or meet with a current student and our students can share with you about what they're doing, meet with a faculty member, meet with an alumni, all to give you some of those different perspectives of what it would be like to be a graduate student at the University of San Francisco. Awesome. And uh, as always, we'll be uh, posting the uh, application dates and everything on our weekly newsletter. So be able to tune on, on that on Fridays. And then as well as like Ashley said, the website's probably going to be the best way for them to find all that information as well. And, and then you have, are you, would you say your program's more active on like LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Twitter, or is it um, a mixed bag there? No, great shout out. So we are, we post on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter five days a week. So it's at okay. USF SPRTMGMT. So no, no vowels, uh, but at USF Sport Management, we post five days a week on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And that gives you an idea of some of the jobs and internships our students are completing, upcoming events, admission information, all of that stuff is there. We are also on LinkedIn. So please give our uh, LinkedIn page a follow as well. And, you know, I'm available. If anybody wants to connect directly, I'm happy to jump on the phone or on Zoom and chat a little bit more. Um, you know, I can share my perspective as an alumni. I can share my perspective as a student, albeit it was a long time ago. And then also just uh, just general questions about being a graduate student. Yeah, that, no, I can I can allude to that. And 
Ashley was very gracious. I emailed her and she got back to me, you know, very shortly thereafter. So we were able to set this up and we're thankful for, you know, you to share your time here with us and talk to us about, <clears throat> excuse me, the program. And um, we'll, we'll be able to, you know, give the links and all that for uh, the future students. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. It was really <clears throat> fun having this conversation. I think this platform is awesome for people who are looking at graduate school. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Uh, I will see you later. Thanks again.